Hey friends, Kevin here, and today we're going to talk about mistakes people make when they buy their van, whether it's a minivan or a cargo van, whatever they are going to try to use for van life that they're going to convert into a camper, into a camper van, whether they're going to try to do this full-time or part-time or whatever. And we're going to use a real-world example of something that just came up in a forum that I was in and the situation that this young man has gotten himself into because there are so many people jumping into this thing right now, especially because people are getting their tax refunds, people are getting this stimulus money, they're all excited about this, they're jumping into getting their van and doing a conversion, and a lot of them are just doing it the wrong way. So we're going to make sure that you avoid those types of mistakes. So let's get to it. Now, in the case of this one young man, and if he happens to actually be a subscriber and be watching, I'm certainly not picking on him. He's in better shape than a lot of other people that I've seen, and there are going to be some true horror stories come out of this with what people are buying right now. Because everything's up for sale, it is a seller's market, the buyers have all this money they're looking at as being free money. It's driving the prices up. Everything's out of whack. And it's going to take it a couple months to go back to normal. But go back to normal, it will. But right now, people are buying anything and everything. And they're on the way to look at a van. And the seller sold it out from under them because somebody else has shown up before they got there that had the money. People are buying anything, and they're buying it without doing the things they need to do to check it out. So like I said, this one guy, I'm certainly not picking on him, but we're going to use this as an example. So anyway, he bought this older Ford full-size van, but it doesn't matter what brand it is. None of this matters. He's all excited. He has a couple of things to do. And of course, the first thing he does, one of the first things he does is he takes everything out of it. And thank goodness he didn't get as far as ripping the ceiling and everything out of it. He just basically has taken the carpet out and all the plastic panels and the seats and in order to have that, that's something to start with. And that is mistake number one for people that are getting into this especially again with the younger people, but I see people my age making this same mistake. They're so darn excited about this that they aren't do thinking about maintenance on their van or what condition the van is in. They're so excited at seeing these videos and they're completely gutting their vans, even mini vans, so they can do all this cute wood stuff and put these custom cabinets in they're going to have issues. You're going to see a lot of these things come back on the market for sale. And you're going to have a lot of people in different groups and different forums that are telling some very bad stories. Trust me on this, it's going to happen. So the first thing before you get into your van build out, once you get your van, buying a used van, is make sure it's mechanically right. If you have mechanical experience, that's great. If you don't have mechanical experience, hopefully you have some friends and relatives that do. And if you don't have that, you're going to be paying $80 and up for garages to solve these problems for you. So it's okay to buy a vehicle with issues. Just like I just picked up that $500 van, and you should see this popping up. I'll link this down below if you've not seen that. It had a few issues, but they were the right kind of issues. They were the issues I knew I could solve and that I could solve inexpensively. In fact, before I bought it, I knew what it was going to basically cost me in order to fix those problems. And that's the way you need to go into this when you're going and buying a vehicle. You need to back off and take a day, and if you lose this thing and somebody steps in and jumps the gun and buys it out from under you, so be it. Right. 
because while everybody's screaming it's a seller's market right now, and it is, it will go back to normal. We will go back to reality. And even in a seller's market, the fact is there's more vehicles out there than there are buyers. So don't get sucked into what you're seeing on the news. With that said, make sure that what problems you have, you're accounting for. So I'm going to do some more in-depth videos on exactly how I look for vans and how I found the other vans and other vehicles I have bought over the years and negotiating prices and all of those things. But at the core of it, you need to know what the things sell for when they're right. And if you can find one that has issues, solving those problems has got to come off of the price. And the difference is you're going to look at it as solving the problem as if you had to take it to a mechanic to do and pay that $80 an hour labor rate. Now you may have an issue which is $400 labor, but $100 in parts and it's something you could do or someone you know could do for you for a few dollars. If so, you still negotiate that basically off the price and then you're going to put that the difference in your pocket for you dealing with the problem rather than taking it to a mechanic. But first you have to know what problems they have. So back to this particular guy, things that he probably did wrong. Number one, I guarantee almost, he didn't spend the 30 bucks and pull a Carfax on this thing. I understand people don't want to spend money, but you need to know you need to know these things. And car faxes now have go back for years and years with all of the state inspections, whether they passed, whether they failed, what the mileage was at that time, every DMV registration, and a lot of mechanical work that was done by garages, by dealerships, will be on there. So you will be able to see when alternators and different things were replaced during the life of that vehicle, brake jobs, all sorts of different things that will help you in your decisions and also help you know when certain things were done or if certain things really weren't mechanically maintained very well. Because you're going to run into those vehicles with private sellers and they think it's worth way more than it is and they've been a little cheap guy or gal and they've not done and repaired basic little things as they've broken. And yet they expect top dollar for their vehicle. You walk on those, it's that simple. You don't overpay for something from somebody like that. You walk on it. Remember this, there will always be another one. We're dealing with minivans and cargo vans. We aren't dealing with low production sports cars. There will always be another one. Always. So never feel bad walking on a deal. But if you go through, as I've thrown this, these pictures up there and different things he's talked about, he's fixed a few issues, but there's things he should have caught in a test drive, or there's things he should have caught he should have taken this and had it to a garage. And I don't really care that much about the opinion of the mechanic, but I will pay them for it. And I want them to look for leaks and things underneath, and I want them to wiggle things on the suspension, but I want this thing I'm going to buy put on a rack because I want to see underneath it. And one of the problems this guy has is rust. He has a lot of rust. He has rust now that he's having to patch places in the floorboards of this van, which can be fixed. They can be sanded down. They can be fiberglassed over top of. But if he had been underneath this vehicle, more than likely he would have seen these particular rust issues. He has a ball he can't get off the hitch because it's rusted together. One of the things, again, that should have been done, and if you're dealing with this much rust, I really want to be looking at shocks and where they connect and springs and all of these sorts of things, the exhaust system, to make sure that rust hasn't eaten those things up because that's going to be expensive to fix. 
And in a worst case scenario, and you can certainly run into this in the Northeast with some of these vehicles, that rust has basically eaten through the frame, in which point you're just about going to end up junking the vehicle. If you have a vehicle that you can't connect the shock anymore because something has rusted away, your motor mounts have rusted away, these are things that will put a vehicle into a junkyard and you're just going to be the last sucker owner. So go to a garage. Don't expect these people to do this for free. Tell them, hey, this is a vehicle I am looking at buying. I need you to rack this thing and look under it and let me look under it here and pay them to do it. Pay them 20 bucks or 40 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it is to do this for you. And go under there and look at it yourself. I know some garages don't like you doing that, but most independent garages will let you do that if you kind of know what you're doing and you're not getting in their way. And take pictures of things so you can go and you can blow them up and look at them. And make sure that you're not, don't have these underlying issues. Because too many people are jumping into these vans and the van starts up and they, they get it home and they're all excited and they're thinking tune up and they change the oil and maybe they change the spark plugs and, and spark plug wires. And there's nothing wrong with doing a tune up if it's needed, but on these modern vehicles, anything made the last 30 years pretty much. If you have a problem, it's going to show up. You're going to have misses and stuff when you need to, to do something like that. So that's not your issue. You're looking for problems that's going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. How old are your tires? Every tire has a little oval or square box that has four numbers in it. The first two numbers are the month. The last two numbers are the year that that tire was made. So if you look in that box and it says 1008, you're dealing with tires on there that were made in 2008. It is time to change them, especially if you're in a full-size van that's carrying more weight because you're just going to be a blowout waiting to happen. You're going to have problems. So regardless of how the tread on the tire looks, doesn't matter. If the tires are too old, they need to be changed. And on these bigger vehicles, you're looking at a five to seven year tire life. That's it. In order to be safe because of the weight that these things, like this big van that I have, are carrying. Because fully loaded, this thing can get up to 7,000 pounds or so. Whereas a normal little minivan is about 4,200 pounds. You're carrying a lot of weight. You are on light truck tires, bigger tires that are carrying a lot more pressure. You have to take care of tires. You have to know these things. So again, the tires can look great, but if they're 12 years old, you need to factor in six or $700 at least to replace those tires on the vehicle you're looking at. It's these little things that's going to keep you from having a bad experience compared to a good experience or being in one of these nightmare situations like this particular guy is in. And like we've talked about, more and more people are going to get in because they're not doing the right things when they go and buy a vehicle. So yes, some of this was this guy's fault. Some of this wasn't this guy's fault. He was young and excited and we all made mistakes and we all continue to make mistakes. But the important thing is that we start educating ourselves so we make fewer mistakes in the future and we learn from the mistakes of others, which accelerates our learning curve into whatever it is that we are trying to do in life. That's the way I look at everything. So eliminate the worst mistakes, eliminate the big problems, it's better to be patient, and as long as you're the one standing there with money in your hand, regardless of what they come on the news and tell you that something is a seller's market, you have the advantage. Because you can always walk. There is somebody out there that will give you what you want once you find something that meets your needs and isn't going to cause you headaches in the future. 
sometimes, and I understand this, you're excited and you want to, you want to get moving on this thing, you know, and fear can hold you back too much. So that's why some of the videos I've already put out that's in this playlist that's popping up here, and I'll link down below, different tips on buying vehicles. And like I said, I'm going to do some more videos coming up. I'm going to hopefully get with a friend of mine, and we're going to do some videos together on this that will help you guys and gals out that are looking for your first vehicle to use for van life, your cargo van, your minivan, whatever you're going to use as a camper van. So some good stuff coming. If you have a horror, horror, I always have trouble with that word, H-O-R-R-O-R, -R -O -R, horror story, be sure to put that down in the comment sections because we all learn from each other's mistakes also. Good experiences, bad experience you've had with, with used vehicles, whether they were vans or not. If you had a certain cargo van or minivan, even if you don't have it now, even if you had it before you got into being interested in van life, put your experiences with that vehicle down in the comment section so other people can kind of see, well, here's a set of vehicles that do okay. Here's a set of vehicles that seem to have a lot of problems, bad problems. So we'll all work together. We'll talk soon.